I've got good news. Turns out View Remark is kind of like Markdown on steroids. There's like a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can do. So we're going to say Gridsome Develop and have a little play with this. And the first thing I want to show you is that we can actually use all of this front matter inside of our Markdown. All we have to do is throw in some moustaches, say front matter, and then just grab out whatever we want. So if we want the title, we can whack that in there. And let's add a hashtag so that it's gonna be big. And then we'll control click that and see what it looks like. There we go, so there's the post title. And just to show you that this works, let's grab the author and try it with that. And now it shows the author. So that's pretty cool. Another cool thing that we can do is throw components in here. So we can actually import components just like we would in a .view file. So if I just say import, and we'll make a component called big button, and we'll import that from uh, slash components slash big button dot view. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then we'll jump into components, create a new file, big button dot view. Whack in just a example template and let's just make this a button and let's make it big. So to do that, I'm just gonna say style, add a bit of padding, maybe set that to 22 pixels so it's big and call it big button. All right, awesome. So let's see if we can actually use this button. So maybe it's like a call to action sitting at the bottom of our page. So we'll just say big button, whack it in there and let's see if that works. There we go, we have a big button. So this can also accept props as well, just like we usually would. So now we can say, for example, the color is equal to green. Let's make it as ugly as possible. And then we can say here, color, and that's a type of string. And let's set the default to black. There we go, so we'll come up here, turn this into a template string. And now we can say background and just slot that straight in. Let's see if that works. And there we go, we got a green button. And from your end, you have total control over this. You can just whack buttons with whatever color you want all over the place. I reckon that's pretty cool. Now, another thing that we can do is import data from somewhere else. So maybe for example, you wanna hold some JSON somewhere in your document. I don't know, let's put like a folder here called data and then a new file called websites.json. So we've got some JSON here for some websites and maybe I could have, for example, my tutorial site. Oops, JSON, so we get to wrap that in a string. And then that would be HTTPS and I'm just gonna whack my website in there. dot. Life, there we go. Kind of a shameless plug as well. <laughs> All right, so now we can jump back in here and actually use that data by saying import, and then we'll call this websites, and we're gonna get that from slash data slash websites dot JSON. So there we go, now we can actually use that JSON. And I'm just gonna come under here, create like a subheading and say my website, for tutorials, one, two, three, exclamation marks, because this is exciting. And then we can just throw in some mustaches and say websites dot, and what was it called again? It was called tutorial sites. Websites dot tutorial sites. Save it, refresh the page, and there we go. Now we can like pull data from all over the place. Now, another cool thing we can do, and this is really exciting, is have like sections of Markdown. So we can pull in Markdown from other places and put it into this file. So to do that, we're going to create a new folder in source, and I'm gonna call this folder sections, and let's put a new file in there. And maybe this is like latest book. So maybe you're a really prolific author, you're constantly writing books, and so you have to always update what your latest book is. And let's call that latest book.md. And then we can say, for example, let's just throw some front matter in there. I don't really need any though. Uh, my latest book is uh, creating view SPAs. 
I haven't actually written that book, guys, by the way. <laughs> now, we come back here. Uh, we can say, for example, import latest book from, and then we can say slash sections slash latest book dot md. However, that's not quite going to work yet. Okay, so notice that it hasn't found it. The reason is we actually have to jump into gridsome.config and add in here includes paths and then whack in that path. So now we'll say dot slash source slash sections. Okay, so that should work. Save that. And we're going to have to restart the server because we've changed the config. And it looks like I've got a typo. Get rid of that. Refresh the server again. And it looks like it's working now. So we're going to have to jump back in here and actually use this. Now we can use latest book as its own component. I'll show you what I mean. Check this out. We just whack it in there like that. And now it shows up. My latest book is creating view SPAs. Maybe you've just written a new book. My latest book is solid in view. And there we go, it changes. How cool is that? So just to review everything in this video, we can use all of the front matter up here by saying front matter and then whatever the front matter we want to use and putting it in mustaches. The other thing that we did was we pulled in a component and we whacked it in down there. So basically we've got all of the power of view just sitting here inside of our markdown file, which is awesome. The other thing we can do is just import some JSON data from wherever we want, and we can import markdown. However, remember when you're importing markdown, you have to go back into your config file and use this include paths inside of options. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, as I always do. See you in the last video where we're going to explore routes and paths. Thanks for watching.